Hey guys, welcome back. So today, it's really, really cold outside. For us here in Indiana, 10 degrees is pretty darn cold. I know other parts of the country are sub-zero. And for those of you guys living uh, where they do the Celsius thing, 32 degrees is where water freezes. We're well below that. And when it gets that cold outside, I kind of get this uh, idea to freeze things. A couple of years ago, I did a video where I took an M16 and a SCAR, poured water on them, let them freeze, and fired them to see how they would perform. I kind of screwed the test up though originally because I didn't chamber around before I poured water on the gun. So eh, that whole video was kind of a mess. So we're gonna redo the video. This time I will chamber around in all guns, but we're also gonna expand the test. I'm not gonna use the SCAR, but I do have a 6920 Colt. You've seen this here on the channel before. I'm gonna use it. We have a rifle that uh, I'm really starting to like quite a bit. The Sig Sauer MCX. These are all 5.56. Next up, one of my current favorite toys. This is a Krebs Custom AC-15 SL2. It's a speed load gun. It's a unique AK, customized. And then a rifle I'm quite fond of, I haven't talked much about lately, and that is the Beretta ARX-100 5.56. So we have one 7.62 by 39 out here, and the others are 5.56s. We're just gonna put 20 rounds in each one of them. For the 5.56, we're gonna use Wolf Gold, which is M193 ball. It's manufactured in Taiwan. It's mil-spec stuff. And then for the AK, we're gonna use Tula, 122 grain ball. This is my pump spray bottle. Now, why are we doing this? If you live in really, really cold climates, say you live in Alaska, what people tend to do is if they have a slung rifle or a rifle with them, they'll go out from the bitter cold, they'll go in, warm up, and then they'll go back out into the bitter cold. When you're out in the snow and you're out in the cold, condensation or frozen condensation in the form of snow will build up on the gun, right? Or get into the gun because the gun's warm after you go outside. Snowflakes will hit it, they'll turn into water, they'll run down inside the gun, then they'll freeze. If you go in and out of warm structures with your rifle, you'll get water and condensation building up inside of it. And when you go in the cold, it freezes and can lock the gun up completely. This is a problem that the Germans ran into on the Eastern Front during World War II. Even their bolt actions locked up. For Americans, the M1 Grand had problems in the extreme cold Arctic conditions of Korea. So that's why we're doing the test. So we're going to take the guns over, we're going to lay them in the snow, we're going to mist them with the water, and then we're going to sit in the Jeep and warm ourselves up for about an hour because I'm already starting to get cold and let these suckers freeze. Then we're going to see how well they work. So let's get started. All right, guys, we're going to get out of the sun a little bit because the sun can warm things up. We're going to lay the, you can hear the ground's pretty solid. We got a piece of plywood over there we're going to set up and block even more of the sun. We're going to lay the guns here in the snow, let them cool off. We've had them outside now for about a half hour. We're gonna let them cool off some more. Grab the other two here really quick. And then we'll spray them down. I'm gonna spray them so I can get water into the action. Not just on the outside, but I'm gonna try to get it on the inside as well. Which would simulate that water working its way into the guns. All right. Here goes the Beretta and the AK. Now let's grab that pump spray bottle start to spray these guys down. Also, I gotta bring the magazines over and load them all before we start this whole process. Can't forget that this time. I'm always screwing something up. All right, let's make sure we got water flow. Yeah, there we go. Kind of a mist. We'll go ahead and mist the rounds themselves because that could happen. All right, go ahead and load up the Beretta. Make sure it's unsafe. Load up the Colt. Make sure it's unsafe. Load up the MCX. Did I get around in there? dead and it is unsafe and then the AK make sure we got water in there all right now let's just mist these bad boys down all right so we're gonna get water everywhere we possibly can on them all right 
Same thing with the M16 or the AR15. Up in the trigger. All right, MCX. Get it on the gas piston. And then the AK. Get it inside there. Get it up on the gas piston. Get it up on the trigger. All right. Now, let's let them freeze and see what happens. All right, let's go warm up. All right, guys, so it's been pretty close to an hour. It's cold as hell out here. Uh, this is the BCM Mark 15 watch. A lot of you guys ask me what the watch is I'm wearing. Usually I'm wearing a Rolex Submariner. Uh, you saw me there with an Apple watch for a little while. I really kind of don't care for it, so I don't wear it anymore. I'm back to wearing my Mark 15, and you may see the, uh, the Rolex in future videos, but that's for all the watch guys that send me all those messages asking me what I'm wearing. Okay, so. Now guys, keep in mind, what we're doing here is a little bit dangerous, all right? Something could go wrong, so I don't recommend you doing this. We are not trained professionals. Jason, behind the camera, is the only professional here. Me, I just play one on YouTube, but make sure you wear iPro and all the other stuff. If you're wondering where those little earbuds are that I've been wearing in past videos, it's freaking cold out here, so these things actually give my ears some warmth. All right, so which do we do first here? Could flip a coin, but I have gloves on and my hands are too cold. Here's a Breda ARX100, the AR15, 6920, FCX, and the Krebs Custom. As you guys can see, I take very good care of my guns. I'm gonna go with that MCX, man. This gun, wow, it just feels frozen. <laughs> I picked this thing up. All right, so all we're gonna do is flip it to fire and shoot it. And uh, let's go over here, getting some sunlight. And uh, the safety lever, oh wow. All right, so there's water in the trigger mechanism. It may not fire, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, pop a round off, see what happens. All right, so it didn't lock open, all right? So, the, the, the velocity is just a little bit low in the bolt, but that sucker's working just fine. It was kind of funny. I can, I can just barely move. It's freeing up now, but I was like really having to crank on that safety lever to, uh, to get the gun going. You can still see the frozen water on it. So it, it definitely uh, froze up pretty good. 100% function. Let's try the next one. All right. Let's go with the Brett ARX 100. All right, this gun I think is probably one of the most underrated guns out there. Uh, I really like this gun. I know a lot of you guys think it's ugly. I agree it's ugly as sin, but functionally I've had a really good time with this gun. I've had this thing for almost two years now and I've not cleaned it guys. I've run this thing suppressed most of the time. I've had no malfunctions with it. The only malfunction I can remember having was uh, over a year ago, I was using a USGI magazine and uh, the, the follower wasn't working right. Other than that, I've never had a problem with it. Watch, it'll fail me today. Selector lever moved quite easily. Let's see how this guy does. Locked open. All right. Seriously, guys, this is one of my favorite guns. I love it a lot. All right. Well, we're all dying to see what the AK is going to do. This is the Krebs Custom. This is a AC-15. It's actually built on an RES-47. It uh, has the speed load feature on it. I'll show you what that does here in a minute. But uh, yeah, good old AK, 7.62 by 39. Of course, the safety works just fine. See what she does. <laughs> Holy cow. Ah. Ah. 
and the Magpul stock broke. Look at that. I was just doing a mortar to clear the malfunction. I got the case out and broke the Magpul stock right there. Well, I know a lot of people like those Magpul stocks. I sort of like them right up until then. And I just knocked the side off of it. <laughs> wow, guys, that is surprising. It's sticking somewhere. All right. There's something sticking. There's something frozen. I could feel it sticking. It's not sticking anymore. But I was really having a hard time. Now, I did spray water into here, into the gas piston system. And this bitter cold broke the Magpul stock. That's impressive. All right. Colt 6920. Got a Trigicon ACOG on it. I've had this rifle for many, many years. That really kind of upsets me about that Magpul furniture. I'm not happy about that at all. All right. It's a lot like the SIG. A little easier to move, but still, still labored. I'm not going to use the sight. See how the Colt does. And malfunction. No? Wait, there's just trigger reset. Let's see if it goes. Uh, trigger reset. So I, I thought it malfunctioned because the trigger didn't pop back. And it popped back on its own after I had released my finger from the trigger. Did not lock open like the MCX. Not locking open no matter what. Could be a function of the old Lancer magazine. Let's, holy cow, I can't. Believe. All right, let's check that out, guys. So the magazine release is frozen. I cannot. <laughs> There's no reloading this gun, guys. That magazine is in there. So that's another interesting test. Can I get the magazine out of the ARX? Well, let's find out. Uh, yeah, so the magazine works on the ARX. I was able to get it out fairly easily. It was a little frozen. How about the SIG? Same problem? Oh, the exact same problem with the SIG as the ARX. I cannot get that sucker to let go. Okay, so I could beat it out, but now, after beating it out, the button's stuck down. The magazines won't stay in. So this gun's out of operation, guys. It's uh, until I thaw this thing out, beating on it. Okay, I finally was able to beat it and get it to uh, Still not working right. There, got to lock in. So there's something to think about, guys. Moisture in the AR-15 style mag release could become a problem. But uh, I can do the same here. All right. Still though, it's frozen, and that button is in the down position. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess. Can't get a magazine to lock in place. There we go. Kind of sort of got to work there. Let's see if it'll go work now. Okay, so it's somewhat working now. All right, so got the AR-15 back up and running. It's not exactly perfect. It's still sticking a little bit, but I can get magazine out and in and it's staying in. Let's go back to the MCX here real quick. All right, MCX seems to be working now. Yeah, MCX is back to working. I'll tell you what, man, that bolt is really hard to pull on that MCX. The biggest disappointment today, guys, with the Magpul furniture and the fact that the AK choked on the first two rounds. 
something will cause that thing to stick. It's free now, but uh, magazine release works just fine. So, magazine's not an issue, but that's pathetic, guys. You can see just how little material there is there. Call me not impressed with Magpul furniture, the side folding stock. That sucks. Well, there you have it, guys. A quick test, I would say, the only real winner this afternoon with 100% function would have been probably the one gun nobody expected to do so well. They all eventually fired. AK had a couple of stumbles, stock broke, totally surprised by that. Uh, AR-15 fired, had one trigger reset issue, cycled the rest of the magazine. MCX, no problem, cycled the magazine. But both the AR-15 and the MCX had magazine release issues, all right? I had to beat the magazine out with another magazine and then fiddle fart around with them to get them to work. No such problems with the ARX. So, you know, not exactly a scientific test, but a fun test nonetheless. If you guys enjoyed this video, Please swing by and check out Copper Custom. It's our online store. You can go by and support the Military Arms Channel by picking up a patch like that for $3.99. It really does help out, guys. Also, if you haven't already, please swing by and check out Full30. It's full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators out there, brought them under one roof, and that is full30.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.